scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Spirit, lead me where my trust is with you. Pray. Matthew chapter 19. The Lord tonight wants to challenge our hearts. Believers must be guided to understand the things. We were having a very brief conversation this afternoon with two of my precious, precious mothers. And we were just talking about why it seems like the power and the glory of God um, doesn't seem to find expression to the degree to which we want it to be. And then especially for our generation, and we shared a number of things. Um, and it just occurred to me, and I've been, I've been drumming this, you know, in the past weeks to the body of Christ, that truth alone does not bless. Truth must be sequentially arranged. The communication of truth on its own will not bless you. But it must be arranged in a way and manner to form a body of knowledge that can give you specific results. But that's not where... Um, I'm going to, I, I brought the issue of our conversation to explain something. Now, please watch this. Did you know that God has vulnerabilities? Vulnerability means your propensity. Are we together? Your tendency. I can predict you based on your vulnerability. Are we together? There are people who are vulnerable to children. A vulnerability is not a weakness. Listen carefully. A vulnerability can be a weakness, but it is not a weakness. There are people who are vulnerable to children. That means if you want to get their attention, bring a child. Is that true? There are people who are vulnerable to pain. The moment they see pain, they are compelled to respond. Part of knowing God is to study his vulnerabilities. How do I get his attention? How do I isolate his attention from the worship of heaven? What must I do to make God direct his jealousy towards my life? There was only one man in scripture called a man after God's heart. What does it take to master the vulnerability of God? That means every time I do this, it's impossible for God to be silent. The Bible says the Lord is nigh them, all them that call upon him. Yes. But you see, you must master the things that you need to do to attract his attention. There are some of my people here, their vulnerabilities revolve around worship. Even if they are sleeping and they just hear a nice ad lib, something, they just wake up to confirm what they hear first. While some of us will be sleeping, quite honestly. 
There are some of you, your vulnerability is power. The moment you hear someone shout or falls down, it's impossible to not be in that service. You are alive. Some of us, our vulnerabilities revolve around beauty. The moment you see beauty, whether in nature, whether whatever it is, some of us have vulnerabilities around excellence. God has vulnerabilities. That means that there is a soft spot to God that a man can find. It becomes your advantage as far as attracting his attention is concerned. Are we together? It's very, very important. And so we were discussing and you see, worship was designed not only to bless you, not only to bless God, but as a system to know God's soft spot. There are songs and there are communications in worship that over time, you will gather songs like a ladder into the heart of God. You can know how to get God's attention in the time of tragedy. You know that not every song will get his attention. There is a song that you can raise when you are in pain. When you need emergency, there is something. There are times that English cannot sing that song. There are times that the vulnerability of God will only require instruments. No voice. And yet it is a song. It's a call. Are we together? I'm vulnerable to sacrifice as a person. I cannot see sacrifice and ignore it. The moment my love language is sacrifice. Not all those. I searched the list of all those love language things. I didn't find anything for myself. There, my, my love language is real genuine sacrifice. It's impossible to see sacrifice and be silent. God has a love language. God has a system of attracting his attention. And part of spiritual growth is to master it. How do I get God to the scene? Ah, David. David, David will say, God, if you kill me now, who will worship you? You too, George. Think, use your intelligence to think. If you kill me and go like this man, what do I do with him? What do I do with him? What do I do with him? Have you had your friend make noise as a class monitor? Now you are supposed to write the names of noisemakers, but now a friend you are vulnerable to was the highest, the loudest noisemaker that day, and now your hands are tied. God's hand can be tied on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That when judgment wants to come upon you, there is someone you can introduce that ties the hand of God. He says, why? Why? This principle was going to destroy you and then you brought a worshiper to the scene. And now God's hands are tied. And you are singing your loving kindness. You are good and your mercies endure forever. God was angry with the nation of Israel. And Moses told God, he cautioned God. Don't behave like this. You are God. Do you want them to say you brought them out? And now they didn't have the power. What is the difference between you and Ra? Read your Bible and God repented. There are people who it looks like God cannot be angry over. They have mastered him like a wife, her husband. When God is angry with your family, because of a violation of spiritual principles, you can come and tell him something. When we praise and worship God, we touch something about him that makes it impossible for him to act like nothing happened. Nothing happened. In Yoruba land here, we're in Yoruba land. There, is, there are these guys that beat drums for wealthy people. Have you seen them? A man is minding his business about to go home and they call his name. 
they start dancing and if he acts like he doesn't want to go they now call his name you are the one we are talking to and dance around him and people start to cheer them and before you know it his hands without consultation will get to his pocket and he will bring out notes and spray them that worship puts pressure on his integrity when you call him the mighty man and he does not respond who else is who else is he has to defend his name that your song is singing so it's one of the technologies of the holy spirit listen when the holy ghost wants god to manifest as certain things he will put the song in your mouth that you will invoke that will cause god to respond in that dimension when the healing anointing wants to flow the spirit of god will move you to sing that dimension of him. He will not come as a lifter when you sing him as a healer. Leave and find out that there are no battles again. Because while you were worshipping, in your worship you called him a warrior. In your worship you called him a lifter. In your worship you said there was no other God like him. So he will search for what in your life looks like a God and prove that there is no God like him. Hallelujah. And he said, why callest thou me good? Jesus is speaking now. There is none good but one that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. Next verse. He said to him, which... Which one? The man is responding now. And Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Listen to his reply. The young man said unto him, All these, all these things I have kept from my youth, What lack I yet? What a wise man. I have kept these things, but I still do not see the results. I acknowledge there is something I lack. I've prayed. I've fasted. I was told when I pray and fast, power will come, but I did it. I've kept it. What do I lack? And Jesus said, listen. If thou will be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor and then thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. <laughs> 22. But when the young man had that saying, he went away sorrowful. Listen very carefully. Why? For he had many great possessions please stop there now a young man comes to jesus and says good master i've heard you talk about eternal life i've heard you talk about life and i desire to enter into that dimension and then he said what do i need to do and jesus gave him a set of instructions and he said no if it's this i have kept it but i perceive that i lack something and jesus told him one thing that he lacked he said, with all that you have done, there were only things that affected the external part of you. He says, go, sell your possession. If he said, keep the money, the man would do it. Sell your possession, then give away the entire money. When you are left with nothing, come back to me. And the man said, no. I can't follow you with nothing. Now listen, 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 listen. He's telling him something here that is our message for tonight. Sell all, not some. He didn't say give all. Pay the price. Look for customers. Sell it. Gather the money. Place so much value on the money, then give it away. And when you are empty and left with nothing, come and follow me the bible says the man left sorrowful how do i start selling my reputation 
how do I start selling my ambition? How do I start selling my track record? How do I start selling my gifts? I give them all away. When I'm left with nothing, I come to, what if I don't find you there? That's a risk. These are the support systems. My self-worth is predicated upon these things. Now you ask me to take away every support structure. When I am left without a system of support, I come. He says that's the one thing you have lacked. This is the reason why you have not entered into life. You have done this. You have done that. But you've only done those things on the strength of a God called your possession. Because you have something to fall back on. Listen carefully. If God fails, you know your business will not fail. At least you will get customers. If he refuses to answer your prayer, your business can answer your prayer. While you find out why he's not answering. If God does not open a way, your gifts can open a way. So those support structures, he's speaking to a man. He says, there's one thing you lack. That all of these things you are doing, you have not yet come to a point of total surrender. Listen, there is only one point I want to advertise tonight. The price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not your mind. It's not your seed. The price for God, everything that can be him within you must go. The price for all of God. A young man who worked very diligently was not a thief, was not um, all of those sins. And then he comes to stand and says, good master, what is left? What have I not done? Good master, I'm a prayer warrior. Listen carefully. Good master, I'm a fasting giant. Good master, I'm a responsible gentleman. Good master, I'm a man of God. I heard that you called me and I, I, I have not rebelled at the call. But why are things not working? What one thing do I lack? How many things? One thing. One thing. And he told him, I know. I look at you and I see your degrees. I look at you and I see your business. I look at you and I see your gifts. And while it is true that you thank me in the midst of them, the proof that you can thank me is to thank me without them. It is easy to thank God in the midst of his faithfulness. But when you can thank him outside of his faithfulness, the, the, the purity of your worship, the purity of your pursuit is tested outside of everything that you have. It makes no sense to not love God when you are blessed. It makes no sense to not love God when things are working. But he says, go, take your possession. Now, if he said, give it away, you still have something to gain, a good name. So you still have something to protect. If, if I give this lady five naira, I give this one ten naira, even if I'm left with nothing, I secured a good reputation. But he says, go and sell it. So that the people who buy it know that it's not a gift. Then carry the money. Give to the poor who do not have a reputation to advertise you. And then when you are left alone feeling stupid, come to me. That is the one thing you have lacked. Please hear me believers. There is one thing that our generation continues to lack. The truth is that God has helped us in the area of prayer, in the area of the word there. There has gradually been a sense of seriousness with God, an awakening. And so we love God in the midst of all of this. But we must get to a point where we allow him to test our love when we are left alone. 
Let me see your worship when you lose your job. Not when you don't have a job. When you don't have a job, you don't have an experience upon which your ego is resting on. But when you lose it, see, it is better to not have something. That innocence, you are innocent. But when you have it, you have added it to your support structures. And God says, lose it. That in this kingdom, we gain things by losing them. That anything you do not lose is not truly yours. The condition to have things is to lose them. You gain a reputation by losing it. You make a name by becoming of no reputation. Look at what, Je understand what Jesus is telling him here. He's saying your confidence, rich man, is not, you are a good man. But I see that there is one thing you lack. I look at you and there are strings connected to your wealth, connected to your abundance, connected to everything. Cut those strings away and stand alone, willing to love me, willing to serve me, whether or not. You see, let me tell you this. There is no disappointment when there is no expectation. Disappointment only comes when there is an expectation that has not been met. I don't expect this guy to hold my mic for me. So if I pass him and he does not hold, I'm not disappointed. But if I expect you to hold my mic and you don't, are we together now? While it is true that God blesses, listen please, listen please. True love can never be a reward. If I love God because, if I love God for, if I love God towards, the moment there is a condition, that is not true love. True love can never be a reward. Because whatever is the object, the defining factor, it can fail. I love God because he prospers. Dangerous reason to love God. I love God because he anoints. I love God because he never fails. They look spiritual, but they are dangerous reasons. If you love me because you like my smile, what happens the day I'm angry? Are, are you seeing that now? You're already in trouble because the love was tied to something. So he says, cut those strings away. It is good to celebrate him and say, Lord, look at what you have done in my life. But you should be able to say, Lord, look at what you have not done. And yet I love you in the midst of it. Go and sell everything that you have sell your reputation notice how God made men in the Bible every time he came to them he always will ask them to do something that left them alone take now thy son thine only son whom thou lovest only son the one you love forget Ishmael you don't love him take the one you love go and offer him upon a mount that I will show you and Abraham became the father of faith. When Jesus himself was going to come to the earth, the father said, if you must come and die, strip yourself of the glory. You are not going to come with it. You will come and learn obedience because you want to gain a name. So you must lose something. Please understand what I'm teaching you tonight. I show you the reason why many people never secure the attention of God. I show you the reason why many spiritual activities will continue to be a compendium of frustration. I show you why we dissipate spiritual energy in supposed spiritual things and we truly do not have results for it. The reason is because while we do those things, the truth is there is plan B. The plan B is very diplomatic. When matters go bad, we can outsource plan. The jealousy of God does not allow you to have plan B. It is either you, O oh God, or I perish. It is either you lift me or I perish. 
Are you getting what I'm saying now? The Bible says the man left sorrowful. Sorrowful. Because he had great possessions. I would sell this. I would give this away. You know, you've heard me say it again that if the Lord told me that this were my last time preaching as a man of God, I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, I will drop this mic and never pick it again. Love. In the midst of plenty or outside of plenty, unchanged. Passion. In the midst of results or outside of results, doesn't make any difference. Oh God, why didn't you heal my mother? Are you really God? And he's looking at you. My CGPA, Lord, I gave my tithe. I'm a tither. And I even gave a seed to, to every man of God that I love. Yet things have not changed. Where are you, oh God? Take away shame from me. Don't let people laugh at me. And God says, that's it. People laugh at you. That's, that's really the object. When you get to a point where it no longer matters. Why will you take the shame when you claim you are not taking the glory? Whoever takes the glory should take the shame. So if I claim he is taking the glory and yet I am so shame conscious, something is not adding up. Why is your reputation such an issue? Please listen to what I'm telling you. I show you a secret to becoming the friend of God. It is more than fasting. It is more than prayer. It is more than Bible study. It is coming to a point in your life where you are willing to lose any and everything and yet your passion for him is unchanged. Thank you because the job comes, but if it never comes, leaving you is not an option. Thank you because I know you will heal my body. But even if I die, the last word that will come out is you are faithful. Come on now. Our world, especially our generation, is full of interests. There is hardly the purity of selflessness. What is in it for me? You are my friend because... Are we together? I found out... You, are, you know a lot of people. And so I've seen that there is an advantage in being your friend. Provided I can see what I can gain from you. It's amazing how that our pursuits, as spiritual as it is, has already been corrupted by the versatility of the lost tied to it. And so we go for seven days dry. What are you looking for? Lord, what did you give apostle? You will give me. And God starts asking why from the one. You never answer. Just send it to God. Why? Why do you want the power? I know why. Because you saw a protocol standing close to a man. Come. It looked good to have people stand. I mean, this huge guy. It looked good to be a celebrity. And you just found out that since I'm not an unbeliever, let me use God to achieve the same result. What is in it for me? The language of our generation. What is in it for me? What do I stand to gain? Show me my court first. And so we carry that bargaining mindset and go to God and say, Lord, I want to serve you, but first, oh, let's define it. Am I going to shine? If yes, more than who? Mention the people who will clap for me while I serve you. Because there are people I need to prove a point to. Will they be part of them? And while that is happening, we have the energy to dissipate. But the loss will never allow God to be glorified. 
sell all you have take it away from yourself be dissociated from it don't go and store it every time in the bible a man built a monument and secured his life upon it god called him a fool there was once upon a time a rich man who built barns and put a lot of plenty please don't get me wrong if you think god is not a giver i will show you that there is a name the, the giving of God cannot be really received by any man. We don't have what it takes to receive all that he wants to give. So this is by no means promoting a life of mediocrity and failure. Look at those who gave him all. Every time people meet me, the number one prayer is a possible a double portion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. I'm sure it comes from a sincere heart. Apostle, this and that. I'm sure some of you while watching Ephenathan minister in your mind, just say, I will dust that voice training again. I mean, if this is what it takes, I will go back. And, and you can discern the corruption. Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. God is not a fool. He is the fountain of wisdom. He must vet the purity of your motive regardless of the accuracy of the activities. While you are doing those spiritual activities, the eye that can penetrate and cut asunder the bones and the marrows, he's watching to see. Can I trust you? If this is his phone, he should be able to collect it without me feeling offended. When I claim this is your phone and collecting it becomes a problem, then something is happening. I have taught again and again that owners are rebels in this kingdom. In this kingdom, we don't own things. When you own anything, you are a rebel. We are stewards, the Bible says. And it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. The reputation his own, the glory his own, the fame, the lifting. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.